All right, for the topic functions and equations, I remember uh, my teacher used to always call it functions, which is really lame. But uh, functions and equations, if you only had a few hours to study it, what would you cover? These are what you should cover. I've gone through every past exam question, and these are the things that show up most often. This allows you to sort of look behind the scenes, to look inside an IB exam. So for the very first one, functions and composite functions, this is this whole notion of what is a function. And composite means like what's um, a function within a function. So it's like f of g of x, that sort of thing. And these ones show up most often on both exams. So they're actually pretty evenly weighted for paper one and paper two. In fact, just so you know, functions and equations in general are pretty evenly weighted on paper one and two. Okay, so just so you know. Um, now we've got inverse functions, which is, uh, there's two ways to do it, graphically and mathematically. And those ones show up most often, actually on paper one. That's the most common place to find them. Uh, graph features and intersection of graphs. I just want to show you this. These are actually very important things. These are here are sort of general. And when I say general, what I mean is, you're not often just asked to do this. These are general features that you actually have to do in all other topics, or virtually all other topics. You do this for sure in uh, trigonometry. You do this for sure in uh, calculus. So these two topics aren't really featured so much in this particular. They show up everywhere. But these show up graph features. These will be things like asymptotes, um, intercepts, in other words, where they cross the x and y intercept, max and min. And those ones show up pretty evenly on paper ones and twos. Intersections of graphs, this whole idea is uh, trying to solve an equation by graphing both sides of the equation. So let's say you have like some big junk on the left equals some big junk on the right. Graph the two, find out where they meet, and those, uh, those are your answers. So this here is how we do those. They're found pretty often on both of them. Now we have quadratics. These are uh, looking at things like, you know, f of x equals, I don't know, like x squared, something like that. Anything that's quadratic, a parabola either opening up or down. And if we look at these, here what we're doing is all sorts of things within quadratics. We could be looking at um, the vertex. Very often we're looking for the intercepts or the zeros. That's the most common thing we're looking for here, are the zeros of this. So zeros of any function are where it crosses the x-axis. The most common thing we're asking for here. Um, there's a lot of ways of doing it, either by graphing, by um, factoring. You could complete the square. You could use a quadratic equation. And within that, really important is something called discriminant. This tells you how many different solutions there are. This one shows up heavily weighted on this, and it's usually paper one. Now, as far as the next one, the six and seven, these are just transformations. These are things where what you do is you take a function, any function. You can move it up or down, left or right. You can stretch it. Uh, horizontally or vertically. You can reflect it across the x or the y axis. And those show up, um, this is just more complicated versions of them, but they show up pretty evenly on paper one and paper two. So these are the very important topics. If I was to try to make a prediction of what's going to show up on your exam, here's what it would be. Again, it's a bit dangerous to do this, but I think it's fun to try to predict. In order of probability, what's most common to show up? What's most likely to show up on paper one will be quadratics. In other words, dealing with quadratics, you're finding the zeros of them, and very likely you're going to be having uh, to use a discriminant of some kind. Um, also, very likely after that is finding the zeros of any old function, not just quadratics, but any function. Next most likely is doing an inverse. After that comes transformations. So in other words, moving things around. Then comes composite functions. And in paper two, you can notice it's very similar because it was just different order. Zeros come up most often on paper two, so finding where it crosses the x-axis. Then you got transformations, composite functions, and this sort of graph features thing, you know, finding the asymptotes and intercepts. These pieces from graph features, those are heavily, heavily weighted here. They show up pretty often. So I hope this gives you an idea of what to do. Let's get started.